These are our garage car overhead doors. This is the overhead door motor. We'll pick up a couple spares while we're at here. If this is the right finish, then the door is done. If it's not the right finish, then these doors are, are not done. And the same thing goes with the casement. The casement is not supposed to be in direct contact with the sidewalk, with the driveway, with the porch. Okay? The board is a cellulose material and it will wick the water up off of the concrete like celery in uh, colored water glass for a science project and it'll come up it's conducive to wood destroying insects it's conducive to termites it's conducive to wood rot and it's not supposed to do that it's, it's simply not supposed to do that also all this beautiful masonry here is held up by what's known as a lintel it's that metal bar that goes across the top. We need that to support the masonry. This masonry doesn't need a lintel because the masonry supports the masonry. We come up over here. Now if you look over here on this masonry, you'll see around the foundation perimeter we have weep holes. Weep holes are important because stone is a very good building material. Brick is a very good building material. This building can burn down and you can reuse this brick. But it's also porous. Water goes right through it. So that's why behind this is a void to get to your wooden wall that the structure was made from. And then you've got a vapor barrier on that wall. Or you've got uh, insulated panels. Or you've got um, uh, building paper. Or you've got um, Tyvek. But you've got some kind of a drainage plane that takes the water down. Now most of the time, all you're going to see come out of a weep hole like this, most of the time, all you're going to see is vapor. I mean, you're not even going to see it. It's going to be vapor. If you have an event, you know, I get it. Water will come out. I hope you don't see one of those, but water will come out. But now we've, we've disrupted the drainage plane with our lentils. And so any moisture that gets back behind there, you can kind of see how the rust is coming down over there and there. You can see that any moisture that's trapped behind this wall can't make its way out to the weep holes around the perimeter. So anytime you're supporting masonry or brickwork with a lintel, you should have weep holes over this. You should have weep holes over this. You should have weep holes over those too. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about garage overhead doors. So we're coming on in here. And you'll notice that these doors are slightly ajar. That's because I released the cords. I released the safety reverse, the safety uh, disconnects. So we know the safety to disconnects work. But it tells us something else. It tells us that the doors are properly balanced and that the doors don't close on their own accord because they're very heavy doors to lift. So our doors are, our door springs are balanced. That's a good thing. Now we're coming on along here, we see in our optic sensors, where our optic sensors are not supposed to be located higher than six inches from the garage. Well, actually from the garage floor or the driveway floor. We're in there, we're on the driveway floor, it's more than six inches. The way a cat can get in there or whatever, I didn't make the rules up, but they're not supposed to be that far up off the floor. They're supposed to be just a little bit closer. A big thing? Probably not. Now, you see these bars running across these doors? These, these are stiffeners, and they support the door. You know what they're not? These are not handles. If you use handles, you're going to mess your door up. If you use them for handle, you're supposed to have a handle inside of the doors. You're actually supposed to have a handle inside and outside of the door. So I'll just go ahead and say that. Should have had a handle on the outside, should have a handle on the inside. Now we come down here, we keep going. You know what's missing on the bottom corners of these doors? It came with them in the same package that had the instructions. It came with them. Three guesses, first two don't count. All right, you're supposed to have spring tension notices to warn people about working on these spring tensions that I just looked at. That's what you're supposed to have inside of these doors. I didn't make that up. All right. And then, you know what else is missing inside of these doors besides the handle and besides the spring tension notices? We do not have warning safety notices. A lot of times there's an illustration on it, like a kid being crushed or something like that, entrapment notices. You're supposed to have a safety notice on the inside of each one of these doors, and you're supposed to have a safety notice over here next to these control buttons. Next to these control buttons, yeah, is that it? And, well, you've got two control buttons, okay? This one is closer than five feet to the threshold. It's closer than five feet to the floor. They're not supposed to be any closer to the floor than five feet, so little hands can't get to them. That's what they're supposed to do. Okay, now we're going to take a break for Inspector Theater, all right? 
Can I come in? Come on in, Mr. Fire. The door's open for you. Thank you. You always make me feel so warm and welcome. <laughs> no, this door is supposed to close on its own accord. It's supposed to have a spring inside of here that closes. Well, that's not required over here. No, it's required over here. You're supposed to have a spring on this door. We don't do that over here. It wasn't required. It's a different code over here. No, you're supposed to have a spring. Most of the things you care about... You might have a jalopy out here that you're tinkering on or something. I don't know. But most of the things you care about are on the other side of the door. This door should be self-closing. It should be self-closing. All right. On, on to our, our demonstration. What else is going on with these doors? Our manual door locks have not been decommissioned. If I open to operate this door right now, I could cause damage to the door. Because hey, as long as the door opener motor is in operation, these should be inoperable. Okay, these should have been decommissioned. They put holes in them right there. You put a little bolt in there to keep it from happening. And I, that would probably be the best way because it's a wooden door. And I wouldn't mess with these screws too many times. I would go ahead and just put a bolt in there and decommission it. It's supposed to be decommissioned. Otherwise, you could close the door. Forget it. Speaking of which, look at here. Close the door from anywhere. And also, I think you'll find that you can open it from anywhere. Now, by law, these switches are supposed to be in the same room with the doors. Okay, that's where they belong, in the same room with the doors. So that you can see them when you operate them. But now, what supersedes code? The manufacturer's installation instructions. And Master Lift has decided that they've got enough safety precautions or whatever. They were able to convince the code council that this is... This is manufactured instructions. You could be at the bank. You could be at the Department of Motor Vehicles. You could be at Kroger Grocery Store. You could be anywhere and operate these things with your remote control and not see them. I had one client, one client. I thought it might be a new thing, but I did. I've got a, I had a client not a week ago and they had um, cameras so they could look at the door before they opened and closed it. So they, they could do it remotely, but still have an eye on the door. All right, well, what does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with some operations. The top one is for the north door. There you go. Look at you. Is that beautiful or what? That's just a beautiful thing. And we'll get our warnings. There we go. Awesome. Okay, now on my inspection agreement posted on my website, on the inspection agreement that my dear client signed more than once for more than one house. Okay, and then I'm just telling you now that I do not do block tests. The manufacturer's instructions, which should be here. Okay, LiftMaster can tell you how to do a block test. And if that's not the case, it should be the case, but if that's not the case, then I have instructions on how to do a block test baked into my inspection report. And the builder can demonstrate a block test to you. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to test the beams. I'm going to take my big old flat zombie hook. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit these buttons with my little hand because I'm a short guy, but I can still reach them. And I'm going to trudge across the tundra with my, like a dancing fool. They all go into safety reverse. How about that? That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. It's pretty quiet. That's not, I mean, you know, they were installed. Right. Just some details here. Switch is too low. Optic sensors are too high. Do not have spring tension notices posted on the corners. Do not have a pull handle. Do not have a warning notice posted on this like you're supposed to have posted on those. And the manual door locks have not been decommissioned. Everything else runs smooth as butter.